Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Wealth Preservation TV. Today we're going to talk about some things you need to know for planning for divorce. Divorce is one of those very common things that happen and uh, you can lose a lot of your assets. You came into the marriage with a certain amount of assets, you built a certain amount of assets during the marriage, and you're going to leave probably with a totally different amount of assets. Well, some of the things you should know is that there's some common methods. Uh, a lot of people do use those prenuptial agreements and those postnuptial agreements. And I really think that you shouldn't just stop there. Uh, for one thing, when we're looking at these agreements, these agreements are going to be, you know, interpreted in family court. Um, one thing you should know about family court is it's a court of equity. There are two kinds of courts, courts of law and courts of equity. In courts of law, you know, we kind of have these bright line kind of rules, you know, uh, this is this is that all the time. When we're looking at courts of equity, equities are based not on principles of law and what the law says, but what's fair. What is fairness for it? And uh, a lot of times in family court, you're going to be in that court of fairness because when you get divorced, especially in Minnesota, we're not looking for punishing one spouse for doing something wrong or something different. The standard is, is this a fair property settlement? And that is not necessarily an equal one. So if you've got fairness in there, that's feelings. And I, I just would never want to trust my money primarily over to feelings. Uh, there's another kind of way you can do this. You can add some trust and things in there that kind of let you work with it. Because remember, one of our biggest principles is to separate you from your money and your money from you. And a trust is a separate person. They only can pull into the marital estate for the divorce what you actually own you don't own what's held in trusts okay so there's lots of different ways that you can use these trusts to kind of split these things up for one thing if your parents or someone left you things in trust you know you never owned it they're not going to be a part of that number two while you're married if you and your spouse have trust for each other then generally speaking you start to put things into those trusts and we kind of split it up anyway there's some more details on things like that that we will probably cover in future episodes, but that's the kind of thing you should know, okay? You may have had these uh, prenups and postnuptial agreements. Um, in Minnesota, they're not even valid after 20 years. Once you've been married a certain amount of time, we just throw those out. The second piece being that there's a lot of disclosure and other requirements that are there, so there's ways for them to uh, attack the agreement, poke holes in it, and you're in that court of feelings. Once we start moving things in the trust, they're not owned by you anymore. The divorce court has to go through extraordinary lengths to figure out a way to get into that. And that's kind of where you want to be. And plus, if you've divided these things up, then you can talk about the important things like raising your children and those kind of issues rather than who's going to get what money. And uh, that's really what you should be focusing on in a divorce, not focusing on um, if you're going to be left destitute or without anything. And planning with trust can kind of help that coupled with a post up a prenuptial agreement we tend to get a very strong plan i'm not saying don't use those agreements but don't rely on just those agreements alone